Hello everyone, welcome back to another straightforward Emacs video. I'm Jake, and today we're going to be talking about Org Mode's clock table feature, one of my favorites. And this goes really well with my previous video on Org Mode's time and task management features. I'm also going to be doing this video a little bit less scripted than my other ones, so I hope you can bear with me as we work through that. Now the core command here for today is Org Clock Report, and I wouldn't be surprised if you've used it before. So I've got a little bit of a demo file here. You can see it's titled Org Mode Clock Table Video, and this is just like a theoretical to-do list that someone might have created in Org Mode, and this actually looks a lot like what I use to manage my to-dos. Now, one of Org Mode's features is clocking in and out on tasks, and this allows you to keep track of how much time you've spent on a particular task. Now, this is great for any professional who needs to manage their time for billing purposes, or really anyone else just looking to get a sense of how they spend their time. Now to do that, you can run org clock in and org clock out, but I'm just gonna assume you know how to do that here. So I'll clock in on this and we can let it run for a little bit and then I can clock out. And now that we've clocked out, we can open up this log book here that it's created and you can see that it's created a clock for us and it gives us a start timestamp and an end timestamp. And I can manually adjust these as well if I wanted to add them in later. So let's say we've just clocked an hour and one minute on this task here. Now, something that we might want to do is if you have a number of different clocks on one task, like let's say this is a project, this is a task that's taken us a while, and let's say we worked on this project a few days ago. Uh, let's say we worked on it on Tuesday. Let's say we want to see how much time we've spent total on this one item, because that's something that you might want to do if you're tracking your time. But Emacs org mode gives us a great feature called the clock report. So I'm going to do meta X and I'm going to run org clock report. And what it's going to do is create this nice little clock table. It's a, called a clock table. It's going to automatically add the header line, a caption, and it's going to generate it. Uh, and you can see that it's just on this subtree. It's going to show us all the clocks on this subtree, and it's going to add up that total time. Now you can see total on this task. We have worked on this theoretical task for one hour and 12 minutes. Now that's great. So let's say we finish up this task. So I'll just mark it as done. Our table goes away, whatever, you know, our, our day continues. We work on some other tasks. Maybe we clock in, we clock out of some other ones. Um, and now here's the feature of org clock tables that I think a lot of people don't really delve into that I wanted to show you today. And that's using different scopes of your clock tables and customizing them so that we can get really accurate and interesting and useful reports from just a single org file and its clocks. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to the file above our header, actually, above the work header, and I'm going to run org clock report. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a file clock table, because as you can see here, we have scope set as the whole file. And I'm going to dive into these scopes a little bit later. But now instead of just seeing how long we've spent on a single item, we can see how long we've spent on all of our items. This is interesting, maybe, but let's say if you've been, you've been using this file for weeks, it might become sort of pointless to see how many hours you've worked on work in general in the past few months, right? Like what good does that do us other than being slightly interesting? So let's discuss a few ways to nail down exactly the information that you'd like. Now one way uh, is to use the clock table on a subtree. So let's say we have a project item here. And what we can do on this project is we can also run org clock report and we can get an idea of how much time we've spent on an entire on an entire project if we want to build a customer or something like that or just for out of personal interest. Now something else that we can do now that we've seen the total time is we can go up to this top one and instead of having max level 2, I'm going to actually change this to be max level 3 or even max level 4. And then I'm going to regenerate it by doing control C control C. And now what we have is a more fine-grained breakdown of our time. So you can see, we can actually go down and look at that project. Remember customer B's project? Well, we knew it took five hours and 14 minutes. And we also knew that total, we worked before we made this change, we worked for six hours and 26 minutes, but now we have a bit more of a time breakdown, which is really nice. And this is getting at what I like to use in my personal org files, which is sort of what I'm walking you through. 
um, but we can make this a little bit better. So now that we have it run on the full file, let's go through a few of the different clock table options that we can actually use on this. So one of the simplest ones I like, uh, you can turn on tags and we can just do that by doing a colon tags and we'll say, say T. And if I rerun this, then we get tags. And this can be super useful if maybe instead of having a tag on this whole thing, let's say customer B's project, this could be tagged. Um, let's say this has the tag finance, this has the tag planning. And now we could rerun this and we can get a better idea of what we've actually done. Now, another thing that we can do is turn on compact mode. And I actually find this to be pretty useful. So turning on compact mode, while it does condense things along and you get less of like that fine grained uh, level wise detail, we have a little bit of a smaller table that's just a little bit easier to look at. Now, another item that we can use um, is block. And this is really getting at what I find so incredibly useful about the uh, Emacs org mode clock tables. Now, what these blocks can do is allow us to choose a certain block of time. When we say block, we're referring to a block of time to consider. So let's just say that I want to look at everything I've done today. I'm at the end of my day and I want to see only what I've done today because what good is it to know what I did six weeks ago? I'd like to know what I did today. And I'm going to add this new option block. So I'll do colon block. And in this spot, I'm just going to write today. It's pretty straightforward. And I'll run control C, control C to update it. And now it even tells us right here for Thursday, June 8th, 2023. That's the day I'm recording this. The clock summary, everything that we've done on this day. And this is great. I can see that I've worked an hour and 16 minutes today. Now we have a similar option in block. We could also do uh, yesterday. And oh no, it looks like I didn't do anything yesterday. And maybe I forgot to clock something from yesterday. Let's say I was in a meeting um, and that's actually done. And let's say that we clock in and clock out here. And let's say that this happened yesterday. So it was Wednesday and it happened for a few minutes. And I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a sense of how I might be using this Emacs clocking feature. Like, you know, sometimes you forget to clock something. You can go back and add that in later. So now that that's been added, now we have uh, a meetings. So let's say we want to see everything we did this week. Very simple. This week, run that. And now we have a summary of everything that we've done this week. And it has this nice indentation, even though we turn on compact mode, we still get this sort of indentation where code and meetings um, are a little bit further um, out than the uh, than, than their children. And this just this idea continues on. You could go to this year, this month, all these different options. Now the last feature I want to show you is one that took me a while to really get using because my ELISP skills weren't really on par to figuring out how to exactly to make this work. But here's what I do to look across multiple files. A common item is splitting up your org to do's. This is, this is a well-known debate. Um, people are always discussing, should I have one org file? Should I have multiple org files? Whatever it is, let's say you happen to have multiple org files. So on my desktop here, I also happen to have um, a file I've generated. And it's actually in org files in a folder and it's called personal.org. And this is just another like theoretical org file. We're buying, we're buying groceries, we're cleaning the garage, going for a jog, a yoga class, all this sort of stuff. Now, what if we want to include this in one of our clock reports, right? Like let's say we want to look at everything in our life, our work, our personal items. So to do that, we're going to need to make a little bit of a modification to our scope. And it's going to involve a little bit of ELISP, um, but it's pretty understandable. So this is how I figured out to include all of your org files in a directory. The simple way is to just write the name of the files. So you're going to basically create a list of the different files. So one of them would be this current file we're in. It's called clocktables.org. And if I were to run this, this would actually work just fine, right? Like this is the same thing because this is this file. Now, if I wanted to add that file that's in a folder, we'll have to go, uh, we'll do org underscore files, then we'll have to call personal.org. This can just become tedious. It works, and you can see we have these different um, file uh, organizations, but this can become tedious, especially if you've got dozens of files. So here's a different way to do it. 
we're going to take the scope and we're going to write a lambda function like so. You're going to write lambda and then a opening and closing parentheses. And then we're going to use this function directory files recursively. And what that does is it gives you, you, you give it a regular expression and then you give it the name of a directory and it'll find you all of the files matching that regular expression. So right now I'm on my desktop. Um, so I'm going to start by calling the, uh, by writing the name of the function directory files recursively. And then it takes two arguments, the directory and then the regular expression. Now the directory we're in is the desktop. So I'm just going to put in the path to my desktop here. And then the regular expression, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to want any org files. So I'll just put uh, any org file um, as the regular expression. And this is going to do essentially the same thing. But now, if we even wanted to add another file, so let's go into that org files personal, and let's even just create another file. And we'll clock in and clock out on something, just a theoretical item. And if we run this function again, this business file is added like so I didn't have to do anything manually and all of the same options still apply so we can turn on compact mode we can set a we can set a block to be today so everything we've done today the the options are uh, well they're not limitless um, but there is nearly everything you could possibly need to get a very very solid result on your org clock tables it's a wonderful thing to be able to keep track of your time and the clock table is a great way to do it so I hope that this video has been helpful and I hope that my unscripted video has been just as clear and helpful as my other ones. Consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed the video. And if you have any other questions, feedback, comments, please leave a comment in the comment area. I try to reply to all of them.